Hey, hey, welcome to Sketchy EBM. My name is Anthony Crocco, and today we're talking about information transfer at Care Transitions. When I'm not making sketchy videos, I work as an emergency room pediatrician. Now, a few years ago, at the beginning of my shift, another physician wanted to hand over a patient to me and, seemingly in a bit of a rush to get home, gave me a very lackluster description of the patient, their condition, and their needs. I told my colleague that this handover was not acceptable to me, as it was putting the patient at risk, and I would be happy to take handover when he was ready to do so properly. His following handover had all the details I needed to safely take over the care of the child, and my colleague promptly went home afterwards. We can look to relay runners to see how their passing of the baton is done in a way that is predictable, standardized, and successful with shared responsibilities between the first runner and the second. When patients are moved or transitioned from one team or area to another, even if this is briefly, the entire healthcare team has a responsibility to make sure that this transfer is done in a way that is predictable, standardized, and safe for everyone involved. We know from past experiences that when we don't do a good job with this process, we put our patients at risk of preventable harm and also expose our staff to unnecessary risk of injury or infection. When done correctly, this process can be safe for patients, families, and staff. So you may be wondering, what is a care transition? Well, a care transition is any time the people or place where a patient is being looked after changes. This change can involve any number of members of our healthcare team, including nurses, porters, healthcare aides, physicians, and other professionals. And examples include when a patient is admitted, when a patient is handed over between shifts, transitional trips such as to diagnostic imaging or the medical diagnostic unit, transfers to another ward, or even discharge home. The second thing you may be wondering is what the term information transfer means. Information transfer refers to the process of how we make sure that the relevant information about a patient is shared to the team and unit taking over their care. Now this is going to be very situation dependent, but will usually involve the patient's identifiers, information about the patient's provider, reasons for their transition, any safety concerns including risks of falls, infection, or harmful behaviors, patient goals, care plan, medications, allergies, diagnoses, test results, procedures, and advanced directives. Depending on the care transition, the information transfer may be very straightforward or very detailed. Again, the information transfer is situation dependent. Now that you understand why this process is important and what we mean by information transfer and care transitions, let's talk a little bit about how we can do this well. The first thing to know is that there are a number of tools available that standardize the way we can transition care for a patient. We will discuss some of these tools in a moment. The second thing to know is that doing information transfer face-to-face, -face, when available, is always better than over the phone. Thirdly, it is important to involve patients and families in this process so that they understand what is happening. Additionally, they can help ensure that any transitions are being done with all of the relevant information. So there are a number of tools that exist to help us with this whole process. These tools are great at standardizing what information is being transferred at care transitions so that this whole process happens safely every time, regardless of who or where the patient is being cared for. Some common tools include the Ticket to Ride tool, SBAR Plus, various checklists, TOA standards and tools, CARDEX, discharge bundles, patient whiteboards, patient education materials, and the Pediatric to Adult Transition phone app. Information about these tools can be found in the Hamilton Health Sciences Policy Library. So at the end of the day, what do I want you to remember about information transfer at care transitions? Well, firstly, this process is critical to delivering care that is safe to our patients and to our staff. Secondly, we should involve our patients and their families in this process so that they understand what is happening and can add information when needed. Lastly, Information transfer at Care Transitions is so crucial to what we do that it is a required organizational practice. Thank you for watching this episode of Sketchy EBM. Please take the time to comment and as always, draw your own conclusions. 